Hi, this is Dan. Thanks for listening to my podcast. I trust that it'll encourage you and build your faith. If you'd like to connect with me further, visit my website at revivalnow.com. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at RevivalNowDanSteep and Twitter at RevivalNowDan. You can also download the Revival Now app. Enjoy the podcast and share it with a friend. Welcome to the Dan Steep Podcast. I'm Dan Steep, and on this episode, we're talking Bible prophecy. What is the doomsday clock? Bible prophecy. What is the doomsday clock? Every time we get into Bible prophecy, there's always, um, uh, I think, people's ears perk up. And uh, I I notice that uh, there's a growing hunger and desire for people to, to understand what is going on in the days that we're living in, and how does it all fit together. And uh, Bible prophecy gives us really the missing link that, that uh, probably world leaders may not want you to know, but when you see the events of the world through the lens of Bible prophecy, all of a sudden... It makes so much sense, and I'm so encouraged every time I study Bible prophecy, uh, because Bible prophecy was inspired and written by the Holy Ghost thousands and thousands of years ago. And we see these things coming together in such precision and in such uh, chronological order that it's a testament to Bible prophecy. It's a testament to the Bible. It's a testament to the inspiration of Scripture uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And uh, it is a great encouragement. And you need to, to um, be linked in with good Bible teachers in these last days that we're living in. So let's get into this. What is the doomsday clock? Well, basically, the doomsday clock is a symbol. It was created by scientists, and, and, and it's a symbol of how close the world is to self-annihilation. And that is, by the way, their own terminology, not mine. Now, according to a Newsweek, Newsweek article, uh, December 27, nine, or 2023, so 1227-23, it was created in 1945 in the wake of the world's first nuclear demonstration. It was created by an organization called the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists that was founded by Albert Einstein and the University of Chicago. Now, the doomsday clock has only been reset 26 times in all of history. That's really important to note because it's only been reset 26 times in all of its history, but um, it's being reset on a much more regular basis as time moves on, as we come to the end of these last days that we're living in, and ever so much closer to the end times. So this doomsday clock is recognized by world leaders, both national and international institutions, and universities and leaders. So... Since 1991, it's been steadily moving closer to, quote, doomsday, with the exception of a period of time from 2010 to 2012. So with that that two to three year interlude as the only exception, uh, this doomsday clock has been steadily moving closer to doomsday. It was set at seven minutes to midnight or doomsday when it was first created, and it was adjusted back to 17 minutes in 1991 with the fall of communism. The newest reveal took place on January 23rd, 2024, just two days before the, um, well, actually, um, 
we're sitting here now still in 2024 and uh, at the um, at the recording of this episode we're we're sitting in August of 2024 but so the newest reveal took place just in January of this year and at that time it it held the 90 seconds to midnight position that was set in 2023 or just in the last year so are there real parallels between the doomsday clock and Bible prophecy? Now, with my answer, being careful of what I would call newspaper prophecy, we see news headlines in light of the Bible. We do not interpret the Bible in light of newspaper headlines. So being careful of newspaper prophecy Uh, I offer their reasons that they gave for resetting the clock from the, and this comes from the bulletin.org on January 23rd of this year of 2024. These are the readings or reasons that they gave for resetting the clock. Wars, multidimensional nuclear threats, failures to address climate crisis, bio-threats, and AI, or for the uninformed, artificial intelligence. Now, the 2023 reset criteria are as follows. Geopolitical tensions created by the Russia-Ukraine war, escalation of the nuclear arms race, Increasing risk of biological weapons and pandemics. And the vacuum of weakness in world leaders. So, really, there, there's some tweaks from the 2023 reset criteria uh, into the 2024 reset criteria, but... Uh, many things go hand in hand. So you can you can update. Uh, in 2023, they talked about geopolitical tensions created by a Russia-Ukraine war. And um, uh, now we've got Iran's attack on Israel. And in fact, um, there is an organization, and I forget their name at the moment, but they track uh, global conflict and and it was stated recently that they're monitoring currently monitoring 110 armed global conflicts around the world um there's always the the multidimensional threat uh, uh you know nuclear threats uh but in in 2024 um they also mentioned bio threats in 2023 they talked about increasing risk of biological weapons and pandemics so so you see a lot of the same um criteria with with just some different wording and phrasing but um we certainly see these things um with artificial intelligence coming on board and and i love this one the vacuum of uh, of weakness in world leaders, boy, it's never been more true. So let's let's just um, work through some of these criteria that were given. Wars. Well, Ezekiel thirty-eight and thirty-nine speaks of the Gog Magog war, and most believe that it's going to take place after the rapture, or it will actually set the stage for the rapture, and will be ongoing uh, when the tribulation begins. The Bible's not specific, but it could take place before we're raptured. In the last days of the church, or, or the beginning of the tribulation, and, and the, the, um, the marker between the two, the last days of the church ends with the rapture of the church, and the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation period, begins with 
the rapture of the church. So we're currently living in the last days. We've been living in the last days since Acts chapter 2. And the last days will go up until, and you could also um, synonymously use the last days or the church age. Those are synonymous terms in terms of the time frame that they cover or speak to. And that lasts until the rapture of the church, and then comes the seven-year tribulation period. So um, the, while the Bible's not specific, you know, in the last days of the church or in the beginning of the tribulation, a Russian leader will arise with a, a lust to reestablish the uh, Russian Empire, with a, a lust for war. Uh, the Bible uses the term Rosh, which is Russia, north of Jerusalem. And we know that, that the city of Moscow is almost due north of Jerusalem. And then you add to that the ongoing attacks upon Israel uh, that are continuing. And uh, we see a pretext, potentially, for the Gog-Magog War. I was just recently doing um, uh, a teaching on the Gog-Magog War. And uh, the three criteria for the, the beginning for the Gog-Magog War to take place is uh, the people, uh, the Jewish people have to be resettled in Israel, which is check my, you, know, you can check that off the list. And also um, Israel has to be prospering, and you can check that off the list uh, as well, because their economy is, is very prosperous, one of the top five in the, in the world. And then the last thing that has to take place is um, peace. So there's going to be a, a, a need for someone to come along and usher in or negotiate a, a, a peace treaty that will bring peace to Israel. And, um, but in order for Israel to be willing to sign such a treaty, there has to be war and conflict going on. So that's where we're at right now. Now, they also mentioned for the criteria for the reset of the doomsday clock, nuclear threat. Multi-dimensional nuclear threat is uh, actually what they stated, and we see that many nations that were not nuclear capable are now. India, North Korea, Iran, and Iran being a country who has publicly stated that they're committed to wiping every Jew from the face of the earth, and Iran who is... Um, geopolitically uh, and even militarily uh, more and more each day uh, aligned with Russia. I believe they are uh, actually fully aligned with Russia, but um, it's just not out in the open for everyone to see. So they're definitely, when you look at some of the countries, India, North Korea, and Iran, um, to go along with, with countries like China and Russia, um, these are our temperamental nations that um, economically and politically and religiously, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a powder keg. So you see the, the, the nuclear threat, the multidimensional nu nuclear threat is definitely alive and well. Uh, and, and then they also list biological weapons. And, you know, Jesus, what do I say about this? Um, we witnessed in 2020 the unleashing of a bio, biological weapon on the world. And Jesus personally prophesied that global pandemics are one of the major signs on the road to the end. Uh, he, he prophesied of that in Luke chapter 21. So we see these, these biological weapons are, are very real. And, and I've um, read where biological weapons are being engineered with data collected in recent years, DNA data, uh, where, where biological weapons are being um, so selectively engineered so as to take out specific people groups. You could have a biological weapon unleashed in a country or a region of the country and, and actually not affect everyone. 
but specific people groups. So that's some spooky stuff uh, in and of itself. And, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, uh, verses 32 to 36, he said, uh, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these signs, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So no one knows the day or the hour. And these doomsday clock people, you know, the best thing you can take for that from that is that, you know, they're sort of sounding the alarm to the, the very serious things that are happening in the earth, but they don't know. Jesus said no man knows the day or the hour of the return of the Lord. But Jesus did seem to place his finger on a particular generation, a season, if you will, where uh, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. So um, biological weapons, nuclear threat, wars, we, we can see these things very clearly uh, through the lens of Scripture and through contemporary history. And they also listed the, this criteria of a weakness in world leaders. Boy, we're seeing that. I mean, you've got the, the leader of Ukraine is a comedian that was selected and chosen by globalist leaders to um, be the, the puppet leader of a nation while they uh, prosecute a proxy war. Elections in America and around the world, and I, I, mean, I should probably put it this way, around the world, including America, Elections are increasingly puppet shows. True, fair, and free and legal elections are um, few and far between. You've got this Maduro character in, in Venezuela. He has been, uh, you know, through a, a proper electoral process, he's been defeated, and he won't give up power. And we've seen in America where the, the chosen candidate is soundly defeated through any, any measurement of a legal and fair election. And they do not want to give up power. And there's like this insurgency taking place behind the scenes in America and around the world to, to make sure there, there's such chaos in Kenya right now because of the, the, the globalist puppet uh, president that is, is in charge right now. It's, it's incredible. We've even seen um, through, through lawfare and attempted assassination uh, trying to take out a candidate in America that um, threatens this global order. So elections are puppet shows. There is a weakness for sure in world leaders. When you have um, presidents and world leaders who um, are suffering from senility and they're still in office because they're puppets and they're not really running the show. So there is a leadership malpractice around the world and we're being conditioned by weak leadership. And it's creating a vacuum. A vacuum for what? Leadership. So imagine a strong, charismatic world leader comes on the stage. In, in this leadership vacuum, it, it's going to appear as a no-brainer. When a real leader steps up, the world will bow to him. The World Economic Forum. They're saying things like this. We need a leader now who can lead us through and bring us out of all these crises the world now faces. Never mind that they're crises that they, they were a part of uh, creating. But it's setting the stage 
for the unveiling of the Antichrist, which cannot happen until after the rapture of the church. And, and we're showing you just how close we may be to the very rapture of the church. In Revelation chapter 13, it prophesies of the five political agendas of the Antichrist. Um, I would uh, encourage you to, to go to our YouTube channel at Revival Now Dan Steep. It's a great way to, to check out the playlists on Bible prophecy and uh, on the book of Revelation, but you can also get those things from our website at revivalnow.com. And the Revival Now app that is completely free, but you have to download it from your Play Store. So some good resources for um, ongoing study in this area of Bible prophecy. But I want to turn you to Revelation chapter 16, verses 12 through 16. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. It says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dried up so that the kings from the east could march their armies toward the west without hindrance. Let me stop there just for a moment. I've done a teaching on the, the drying up the, of the Euphrates River. This is a phenomenon that is happening right now. The Euphrates River, you can Google it. You can look it up. It is drying up just as prophesied. It's happening right now. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They're demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for a battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God Almighty. We know from Scripture, particularly when you look here in uh, verses 13 through 16 of the book of Revelation, that the dragon is Satan, the first beast is the Antichrist, and the second beast is the false prophet. As a Christian and a student of Bible prophecy, you, you have to remove yourself from all world political affiliation. The closer we get to the rapture, the more all world political systems will align with the Antichrist agenda for the earth. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that in our educational system, and we're seeing that in our judicial system. We're seeing it across the board. As a Christian, first and foremost, first and foremost my identity is a child of God, a citizen of heaven. Now I'm registered and I vote, but I do not consider myself uh, politically affiliated because I see the system and, and how it's been completely taken over in America and around the world. So political systems, they're going to continue to align with the Antichrist agenda for the earth. The corruption, lies, deception, injustice. I mean, think of headlines even right now as I just mentioned Things like lies, deception, injustice, lawlessness, at the highest levels, rebellion against basic freedom, sovereignty, and autonomy. All these things are moving forth at breakneck speed, and every one of these things are hallmarks of the Antichrist agenda for the earth. They're going to continue to increase. But my hope, and when I say hope, I'm saying my trust, my belief in, and my alignment is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Politics are under the hand of the unholy trinity. The unholy trinity. The dragon, the first beast, and the second beast. Satan, the antichrist, and the false prophet. They're under the hand of the unholy trinity, moving at an unprecedented and expedited pace toward world rulers who hate the church, hate Jesus Christ, hate righteousness, 
Because true Christianity stands in the face of this agenda, of an antichrist agenda. But Jesus told us the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Verse 15 says, Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. I say to to you, listening to this podcast, are you watching? Are you looking? Are you waiting? Are you praying and preparing? Blessed are all who are watching for me, Jesus says, who keep their clothing ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. Verse 16, And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. Armageddon is not a scientific name. Armageddon is a real place and a real name. This is a USA Today uh, headline, and I quote, the world is closer to annihilation than it has ever been. And now when you add artificial intelligence to everything that I've already talked about, I mean, with artificial intelligence, anything can be fabricated. They can take anyone's face and voice and make them say anything that they want them to say. No one will know what's real. And we have a real deception and misinformation problem right now. And with the advent of artificial intelligence, imagine how easy it will be to control the masses when there's no discernible difference or distinction between the fake and the real. And people having their own um, prejudices, their own bents and beliefs, and, and, and people being predisposed to uh, believe you know, in certain directions, they're going to just grab a hold of that. That's why the, the key word in Bible prophecy in the end times is deception. Deceive, deceived, or deception. We find that word all over the place in, in Bible prophecy, in, in, in First and Second Thessalonians, in the book of Revelation, heavily, especially when it, when it centers around the Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan himself. Unknowingly, The very reasons given for the adjustment of the doomsday clock to 90 seconds to midnight were straight out of the book of Revelation, Ezekiel, Zechariah, and Daniel. Bible prophecy was written by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And I I ask you this question. If we're this close to the events prophesied in the tribulation, and the world can see it, how much closer are we to the rapture of the church? Within minutes on God's prophetic clock. The good news, the good news in Bible prophecy is this. If you're born again, if you're Trusting in Jesus Christ for the, salva- for the forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your soul, then you're a part of God's church. And you won't see these terrible events that take place, the outpouring of God's wrath during the seven year tribulation period, because you'll be out of here. It's called the rapture of the church. The church is not a building. The church is not a denomination. The church, the word for church in the Greek language of the New Testament is ekklesia, which means the called out ones of God. Called out of what? Called out of this world system. Called out of sin. Called 
in, into oneness with God as the body of Christ. When Jesus comes to rapture or, or catch his church up out of the earth, there won't be buildings and denominations going up into heaven to meet Jesus. The rapture of the church is for Christians, the born again who comprise the body of Christ. An intelligent person would want to know, how can I make sure that I'm a part of the church? Well, the gospel message is very simple. God is holy, and we're sinful. He's holy by nature, and we're sinful by nature. It's a condition that we were born into when we came into the world. The Bible says that, that we were shaped in iniquity in our mother's womb. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God took the initiative to remedy our condition. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to give his life on the cross of Calvary to pay for the penalty of your sinful condition and mine and bridge the gap between the holiness of God and the sinfulness of man. And all that we must do in response to that is this. Three words that start with the word are. Recognize, repent, and receive. We have to recognize our own sinfulness. We must humble ourselves and acknowledge that we're sinful. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Once you're willing to humble yourself and acknowledge your sinfulness, your sinful condition, and now you can repent of that sin. The word repent simply means to change. Change your mind, change your direction, change your lifestyle. It is to turn from a life of sin and turn to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, the cleansing of the, your soul, and for your eternal salvation in heaven. And then all, all that's left to do after, you're, after you recognize and repent is to simply receive or commit your heart to him by faith. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'd like to offer a simple prayer of salvation. And if you'll pray this prayer after me right now from a place of sincerity in your heart, you can ensure your place when Jesus comes for the rapture of the church. Don't delay. Pray this prayer with me right now. Just say these words. Say, Heavenly Father, I admit that I've sinned. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he rose from the grave to give me victory over sin and death. I confess my sinfulness. I repent and turn away from my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me in the cleansing blood of Jesus. Please come into my heart and make me a new person. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer together with me, welcome to the family of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 23, 10, 13, my, my apologies, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And when you prayed that prayer with me, you called upon the name of the Lord. So by the authority of God's holy word, I say to you today that you're saved. You're born again. Your sins are forgiven. And you're on your way to heaven because you have Jesus in your heart. And if you prayed that prayer with me, please go to our website at revivalnow.com. Revivalnow.com. You'll find a big red button on the front page of the website that says, I just got saved. I want you to click that button and you'll have the opportunity to view some video resources that I've prepared for you to help you get started in your Christian life. And uh, when you submit your contact information, we're going to send some resources to you to help you get started in your Christian life as well. We're going to pray for you. So go to RevivalNow.com, click I Just Got Saved, and follow the prompts from there. 
I want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of, of the podcast. You know, many of you prayed that prayer of salvation with me, and you know people that need to hear this message, and they need to pray that very prayer. So please help us out and um, share the broadcast with, with all of your friends and contacts. Time is short. Don't wait another day. And I appreciate you so much for taking the time to do that. I want to invite you again. You can go to our website at revivalnow.com and uh, you can find out all about myself and this ministry of Revival Now and how God is using us to reach a million souls for Christ in a 10-year window of time. So until next time, be blessed in Jesus' name.